All right, g'day YouTube. How the heck are we doing? It's foul play here, and we're back for the fourth match of this popper leg. We lost the die roll again versus Mildir, and currently two and one after going down to Affinity last leg. All right, well this is Ponza. This is a horrible matchup for us. Uh, I guess we play the Abundant Growth. Uh, we don't really have anything else to do this turn. Lotus Petal could be good for next turn. Alright, and we see Utopia Sprawl. Hopefully our opponent's bricked on mana. Oh, is this the Tron deck instead of the Ponza deck? No. I guess they're just doing better setup so we can actually dodge the land destruction for a turn, and I guess we'll take that. <clears throat> There's no reason to cash in this Lotus Petal just yet. All right, we're praying they play like the 6-6 six, six creature because that would be better than the alternative. All right, Acid Moss, never mind. Not so lucky. And it's got to just be Ethereal Armor, right? <laughs> I mean, one land off away from Ancestral Mask. Ancestral Mask getting buffed by the Utopia Sprawls. Let's just hold off. If we hit any land, they brick on land destruction. This is a better line. Now the Acid Moss. All right, well, they're going to run out of those eventually, right? Attacking. Of course, all our enchantments are white. All right, we'll attack back. I don't think we need to get, like, greedy. Playing one Ethereal Armor doesn't really do very much. If I get the opportunity to put two down, then sure. It has to be a chunky creature here. Yep, Anointed, Alter Sword, Reach Trample. <clears throat> Uh, at least we get around the reach effect there. Jeweled Thief as well. <clears throat> it's a pretty big non-event at the moment. So our opponent will be attacking for 10 a turn, so we have to kill them in two turns. This one has trample, this one has trample. I think we're forced into Utopia Sprawl plus Ethereal Armor Chump Lock and hope for no land destruction. So that we have a 3-3 shutting him off. And then if we hit any land drop next turn, we can Ancestral Mask and hit for a bunch. Warding Party from our opponent, finding Albear. Holy crap, it gets way worse for us, doesn't it? All right, attacking with the chunky one. Um... It's kind of awkward. We're still not in a good position at all here. Currently, it looks like our land is surviving. Nope, Thermo Cask. It's just slow rolled. Opponent missed an attack there. And we break. All right, we'll concede. All right, so this is the Ponza deck. They blow up our lands, as we just discovered. Um, from the sideboard, they have sideboard interaction of D Glamour. Sometimes they'll bring in like a Weather of the Storm as well to gain a bunch of life. Mostly if we're quick, we can do good things. Um, their creatures are Arbor Elf, which ramps them into untapping lands and destroying stuff. Works well with their Utopia Sprawl, their Wild Growth. Um, then they have these big Cascade creatures, Boarding Party, um, Altasaur. And then they have the card draw type effects, the initiative on Avenger Hunger, the card draw on Jeweled Thief, and on Lanawa Visionary. Reminder guys, if you enjoy this video, find it informative, please consider subscribing. Um, so what we definitely want is Gut Shot, 100%, because if we can take that kill on the Arbor Elf, it can just shut down their entire game plan. Buy us the tempo we need. It's perfect. Crimson Acolyte can be okay because it is good into boarding party, but then it's like sort of weak into their other creatures. Um, overall, I think Ledge Walker is probably just slightly better. So we won't bring in the Crimson Acolyte. We'll take out two Ancestral Mask because they're slow. And I prefer Armadillo Cloak with the life gain and the trample. Sand is rubbish. Sand is better, but slow. We'll keep. Bottom of the forest, done. This is like one of the matchups where actually being land flooded can be advantageous for you. Our opponent has mulligan to five. All right, so here we literally just play out our turn one creature. Um, that's fine, and pass the turn. Next turn, 
we probably value Satessin training slightly more than Sentinel's eyes, although we might not be able to resolve Sentinel's eyes afterwards. Uh, it looks like our opponent does a setup turn. Uh, so Hunter Ledwalker, awful draw. Forest is okay. All right, wild growth on their forest, and looks like it's a slow little setup turn from our opponent. We are happy to see that. Uh, we'll send those eyes. I guess I should be going on the cave there. If I landed for turn, I have landed for turn. All right. Uh, so we'll lose our Hunter Ledge Walker. At least if they blow up. Abundant growth. We have access to white mana still in hand. I'll probably hold this white mana in hand um, until there's an aura we want to resolve just to protect it from that destruction. Uh, looks like whatever our opponent is doing is very, very slow, although our beat down is also very slow. I guess we actually start resolving stuff. Um, so that we can active this cave and split up our clock. Yeah, it's no real reason not to. Opponent just passes to us again. All right, well, we'll uh, go ahead and tap a bunch of mana. So that's going to be an attack for six from us now. That's half our opponent's life. We have them dead next turn. I don't know what they're doing with this much mana and no interaction, no creatures like Okay, what do they find? A boarding party? Sure. Spin the wheel as well. Thermocast, yeah, that doesn't matter. We've already got everything we need. Um, you don't have flying. We can only be blocked by flyers. We can attack for six and win. Um, yeah, having said all of this, like we probably lose the <laughs> game three. Uh, not going to change anything in sideboarding. We'll resubmit. I ran a mulligans to six and we see this hand and I'm feeling kind of greedy so I'm just going to go ahead and keep it. It's got the gut shot. If we can blow him out with gut shot, we'll be in a good spot. Unfortunately, we got the double up on creatures, which is less good. Ash Barons into Ash Barons? You gotta be kidding me, man. It's a bit, a bit ridiculous, I feel. <sighs> Uh, all right, so we'll fast mana. We'll cycle the Ash Barons. Getting a forest, and we'll use that forest to play our Burgle. All right, so whatever our opponent's doing, it is a little bit slow. We'll play this one. Abundant Growth. Theral Armor. Attack. Hey, we're hitting lands off the top. I'm not unhappy about that. It's definitely, if there's a match up to top deck lands, it's this one. D Glamour. Okay, sure. Whatever. Maybe I should have played around that and played the cartouche instead, but this is like a very strange game at the moment. Uh, cartouche. Again, we'll just attack. All right, opponents at 17. Scout second main. Keep the Lotus Petal in hand. Hopefully we top deck a land, can active cave, have that attack for four. Our opponent's just drawing nothing. What are, you, what are you keeping this hand for, opponent? This seems absolutely rubbish. I guess we don't really want to complain about that. That's only a good thing for us. Um, but yeah, we'll go for that. The one of Cave of Temptation, two games in a row. Getting actually sacrificed two games in a row in against Ponza. Crazy stuff. Do they side out their land destruction? That can't be right. And they pass to us again. All right, well, I don't know what they're doing, but let's keep going with the pressure. Fiery Cannonade. Sure. Still will deal four damage. Utopia Sprawl from our opponent. Stone Rain on our Ash Barons. Sure, whatever. Again, they're doing this instead of doing, putting like any sort of pressure on our life total. We're still attacking with a 4-4. Uh, this is a very bizarre game at the moment. Turn 7 plays Arbor Elf. <laughs> Thermocast got our land. All right, well, opponent, I mean, 
We'll take that one, I guess. Uh, yeah, go team. That's probably the most unorthodox victory I've had against Ponza ever. In any other time I've had like this sort of rollout, we've lost the match. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Absolutely crazy. Actually getting the strangest victory of all times. Be sure to let me know what you think in the comment section below. Comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. Till next time, guys. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you then.